So today is day two, and we have day two exercise number one and day two exercise number two that we're going to do this afternoon. Your luck, exercise number one is not on scheme. <laughs> exercise number one is on the board here. Same location as yesterday's exercises, same process as before. We fill it out by Tuesday night, everything's going to be due. So if you don't want to do it now, you don't have to do it, but you can just knock it out, get it over with. You have to be here anyway, right? So, what are you going to do? You're going to answer the following questions. So, this is actually working with the lectures I've already gone over. Uh, numbers two and three. And what are they going to ask you to do? You're going to define in your own words the following terms. Agent, agent function, agent program. I highly recommend using the lecture notes. Because it's going to take you twice as long to do a Google search. And you're going to come back with agent. And you're going to have American Express, special agent. What in the world is that? It's not going to be related to artificial intelligence at all. Or if you have the book, if you were able to find a PDF version of the book, I don't think anyone would run out and buy the book personally. It's like $160 or so. And I forgot to bring the book with me. So tomorrow I'm going to bring the book with me too. If you haven't bought the book but you have the PDF version of it, use the book. And use the search feature and look at this information up in the book. It's going to give you a lot more outside of Citibank and American Express and travel agents and agent, 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 all over the place because it's used a lot in different contexts. And you want the artificial intelligence version of all this information. So agent program, rationality, autonomy, these are your vocab words. Define in a sentence or less or more. Your definition, I'm not looking for a paragraph, I'm looking for a short definition. In fact, an agent can be something, don't use this, do not use this. But it could be something as simple as a program that does something for me. <sighs> well, actually, there's a couple of better agent definitions in the lectures that you can use, but because that's not really complete. It's a program, what's a program? Okay, so a computer program or an application that acts on behalf of a human. Is a, could be an agent or something that does something for a human or something that acts a certain way to provide a utility for a human. You actually could probably use that if you wanted to. But it, you could probably come up with a little bit more clearer definition. That's all you want. I don't want like huge, just one sentence. A couple words actually could probably satisfy a learning agent, an agent that learns. <laughs> okay, so if you want to elaborate a little bit more, that learns and adapts to its environment. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, you know, utility-based agent, one that's based on utility. No, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to give me a little bit more, so at least I understand that you know what you're talking about. That's question number one. Question number two, and the whole thing is only worth three points, by the way. It's one, two, three. So, question number two. For each of the following assertions, say whether it is true or false, and support your answer with examples or counterexamples where appropriate. Does there exist a task environment in which no pure reflective agent can behave rationally? Yeah, I can think of a couple of examples. I'm not going to give them to you, but yeah. Think about rationale. rationalism. We talked about this yesterday towards the end, rational behavior versus irrational, what makes it rational. And then we talked about environments, and then we talked about pure reflective agents. Pure reflex agents just respond to stimuli. It's a reactive agent. So is there one environment that can, they cannot, uh, where they can behave rationally or no pure agent can, which means they can't behave rationally in it? Yeah. What if there's no rule base? What if there's no rational answer? Think about humans and how we get stuck in situations. And we, there's absolutely nothing I can say here that's going to be right. And then you get stuck with, you know, well, I have to make the best decision. Then are you acting rationally? Because no, because then you're basing it upon feelings, emotions. You can, you know. So if you had a choice, let's say you were a goal-based agent. This is outside of the box and not answering this question. This is on a slightly different question. If I were to rephrase the question and say if I were a um, utility-based agent, and I was, is there an environment for which I can be stuck in? Because this is just for a reflective, pure reflective agent. So let me change the question and say, does there exist an environment in which a utility-based agent can be, cannot behave rationally in? 
if this is the same scenario, you know, like you're stuck, you know, three friends go out hiking, two guys fall over the edge, and one guy's left, and he only has one hand available to grab somebody else's hand, which one is to grab, you know, kind of thing. I have to, I can only save one of my friends. Can you really think rationally with that? If you're a utility-based agent, you have to save them both, because the utility of, if you were this, if you were the person who's supposed to be doing the saving, the utility of your agent would be to save two lives, but you can't save two lives, so you have to pick which one you're going to do. You can't think rationally. That can't, the, the agent, you can argue that and say, well, the agent can't think rationally because the, both of them are equally as important. They're both two human lives. So how do you choose? It's kind of like, you know, the, the rational, irrational questions, and then there's always someone who's going to come back and say, oh, you made the wrong choice. People argue for years over the wrong choices of those kind of situations where you're stuck and you're a utility-based agent, which means you're acting upon utility and your utility is to save lives. So you failed as an agent if your environment is configured so that you can't make a rational choice. Because your rational choice would be save both, but you only have one arm available. And so you could, you know, I don't know, finagle it so both humans held on to one arm. I mean, that's what they do in the movies, you know. But one person's going to die. <laughs> that's how it happens. So, But it's not a rational decision, and they base the entire movies usually on the, and what makes it more interesting is, you know, how do you turn irrational into rational thought? And the entire, it entertains Americans for years in that concept, all these movies. But did he do the right thing? No, he shot him. Oh, he ran away. He did this. He did that. Well, what would you have done? It was probably something different, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, that's what that question is actually kind of getting at in terms of the philosophy of it. An agent, uh, so you have to go through each one of them, go true and false, and then a... Uh, also, examples or counterexamples where appropriate to say you just don't enter true, false, true, false, true. You know, just provide a little bit of reasoning. You don't have to elaborate too much on that one. And number three, write a pseudocode agent program. Remember yesterday I said, this is pseudocode multiple times. And I said, this is an example of what I mean by pseudocode. Write a pseudocode and go through the lecture, jog your memory. Watch the video from yesterday. One for a goal-based and one for a utility-based agent. I just gave you a utility-based situation. So if on, a, on, a, on an agent who has a utility, the idea is he's there for a purpose. He's there to find something, to save something, to preserve something. There's a utility. Like a knife is for cutting. <laughs> a fork is for eating. So that's the utility. Actually, they call them utensils. <laughs> those are the utilities of those items. A pen is for writing. So our agents, they have utility. A goal doesn't have a utility. Its purpose is to achieve the goal, and it's goal-oriented. So if you're a student and your goal is to get a degree and you moonlight as a pole dancer, it doesn't really matter if that's a good utility or not of your time. You're probably giving you enough money to pay your tuition. But most people would look at that and go, why are you doing that? <laughs> but the utility doesn't matter as long as you're going towards the goal. So the focus is different in terms of the behavior. And the, and the, the agent's behavior is completely different if it's goal-oriented versus utility-oriented. So when you next time you have an argument, say, hey, you know what? I'm a goal-oriented agent. And you're in my way. Get out of my way. <laughs> I don't care what your utility is in life. But <laughs> I don't care what my utility is. I'm goal-oriented. So, <laughs> Questions about this assignment. We're going to have... Uh, how, mu how much time do you guys want? Let me stop the video because people don't need to hear about our discussion.